Hi folks, welcome to uh, our webinar. Great to have you here. Um, we've got, uh, we've had over 110 people register to join us. Uh, so we're just gonna wait a little bit whilst we can see people um, making their way in. Uh, it's always boring waiting for people to turn up. So um, it'd be lovely if you just use the Q&A function in uh, Zoom just to just tell us where, you're, where you are. Just, just give us a note, say hello. Um, tell us whereabouts in the world um, you're watching from. We know this is, we've got people from all over the place. So yeah, just while we're waiting to get started, just it'd be lovely if you just jumped into the, the Q&A and um, yeah, told us where, we, where you are. Um, be great to know. Um, oh, hi, Ollie. Great, Ollie, got Ollie, Ollie in the Isle of Man. Thanks, Ollie, for going first. Yeah, any, anyone else? Just, uh, just in the, uh, in in the, the chat webinar. Function. Chat function, just, just tell us where you're watching from and where you're joining us from. Um, ah, Jane from Saudi Arabia. Hi, Stevie. Krista, hi, Krista. Nice to see you. And Jason, love to see you again. And Jane, Jules. Lindsay, uh, hi. Amman, the jewel of Arabia. Jules is in Amman. <laughs> oh, hi, Joe Heap. Lovely to uh, know you're here. Oh, great. Dakar, got Senegal, MFA. Hi. Lindsay's still in Hong Kong, Lindsay. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> still in Hong Kong in a hotel somewhere. Ollie's with us. Hi, Ollie. Uh, Matt from Longacre. Nice to see you, Matt. Great. Yeah. So if you're just joining us, lovely to have you here. Just, um, We've had over 100 people register for the webinar. We know not all of them will turn up because a lot of people register um, so they get the recording, but just whilst we wait for people to start, um, just yeah, jump on the Q&A function and let us know whereabouts you are, where you're, where you're watching from when we get started in a minute. Um, oh, hi, hi. Joe. Joe is in Bristol, not far from me. Oh, um, Nina, Ninja. Hi, Ninja, Nina, Nina. Lovely, lovely. Ah. I see I have Hannah Broadway. We do have Hannah Broadway artwork all the way through our beautiful Indeed. things. And that's all down to Hannah. Fantastic lady, very talented. Uh, some from Istanbul, Bogota. Wow. Rachel, hi, Rachel. Nina says she's waving madly. Oh, <laughs> I, can, I can picture it now, Nina. <laughs> I can see it, I can see it. Uh, Right. Oh, what yeah. wonderful. So we're, we're over 50 people with us now. Let's just give it, a, let's give it another minute or so. Um, I promise you we will get started. Um, yeah. Just uh, imagine we are standing welcoming you at the door of a school classroom and we're just allowing for the fact that maybe someone's just kind of finishing off their break time and rushing down the corridor to get in. Um, hi, Georgie. Um, hello, Mary in Surrey. Uh, Oh, it's great. What a wonderful bunch of people. Goodness. I want to have everyone in a room together. I just got to want to have a hug. <laughs> oh, miss hugs. Miss yeah. hugs. Mm. Um, thanks, Jenny. Yeah, encourage participants to add to the chat so all can view by clicking. Yeah, when you say hello, just do panellists and attendees in the drop down menu. And that means that everyone can see each yeah. other's comments rather than just Jill and I seeing them. Um, so, yeah, say hello change it to all panelists and attendees rather than just panelists. George, hi Georgie, I see you're here too. Great, lovely. So we're at 50. So let's, um, thanks Joe, let's, let's get started, shall we Jill? So welcome everyone. Um, delighted to have you all here. Um, and uh, this webinar, you're in the right place if you're looking for the webinar on um, thriving in uncertainty and what uncertain times we're, we're facing. Um, we're gonna be here for about an hour. We know that people use their lunch breaks or finish school or work and at the end of their days, depending on where in the world. So we all, we'll absolutely do our best to finish by um, the hour. Um, because of it's a webinar format, um, there's no kind of interactive chat other than the Q&A function. But um, if you do have any questions as we go, we're gonna take some pauses as we go um, and we'll be checking in on the chat on the Q&A function. So please just feel free to ask us any questions um, as and when. Um, we will pick them up and if we can't pick them up, we'll make sure that we'll follow them up afterwards. Um, we are recording um, and again, if you need to go at any point or you need to finish early or whatever, um, if you've registered, then you'll get a copy of, of the recording 
um, afterwards. So um, yeah, let's get started. Who who are we? Who's Matt and Jill? These people. I know I know some of you know us well, but not, a lot of you don't. Um, so we run a company called Making Stuff Better. We're a coaching um, and leadership development company, working primarily with international schools, but not exclusively. We work with lots and lots of of different people. Um, our background um, is in schools, um, in school leadership. Um, we, Jill and I met in a um, school in uh, inner city Bristol um, and have been running MSB um, for the last three years or so. Um, Jill, do you want to say a bit more about who you are? Oh, I could, I could go quite deep on that, couldn't I? Uh, yes, I'm Jill and that's right, we work together in an inner city school in Bristol. Um, and my background has been in school leadership, um, running schools. Um, and essentially, as a result of that, I believe we both believe in the resources of humankind to get really, really deep. But actually, we've all got the resources within us to be absolutely amazing, to live huge lives. So that's how we got drawn to this. Um, and so we've been running um, this company for three years and the work that we've attracted to us has just been so rewarding and so creative. And I'm a, cr a creative soul. I like to paint. Uh, and do various things um, and it just feels so beautifully aligned so very very pleased to be here and seeing these wonderful people arriving on this webinar um, is just wonderful so yes love to be here great and there's i know you can't see each other but we're we're kind of at over 60 people with us now it's just just wonderful so so let's dive in um it's an obvious question it's a really really straightforward starting point but we like to keep the things simple what um yeah, what is what 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 do you understand by uncertainty, Jill? Tell tell me a bit more about what and why and why we've decided to do this webinar. So, um, <laughs> so uncertainty is this funny thing. Um, we we have it in our lives all the time, all the time, but we're always surprised by it. We're always a bit shocked by it. Well, hang on a minute, I don't know what's happening. Um, I thought I had a plan. I was going to start here and go here, and it's all going to be a straight line, and, and it was going to, it's all going to work. And we, ha I've got this plan. It could be a school improvement plan. It could be your own personal plan. And when a curveball of monumental proportions, in this case, comes along and gets you, I often talk about getting you into your ribs, and you weren't expecting it. The impact can be enormous because we just don't know how to be. We don't know how to be with uncertainty? How do I respond to that? And as human beings, we're often quite grasping in needs of certainty. We need to feel we've got really solid ground to, to be on. But in truth, we're always dealing with uncertainty. So why are we surprised by it now? Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing it because, um, A, yes, of course, what we're going to talk about is going to be uh, applicable for this very, very current moment. But also it equips us with our life in general. And this slide, I think, gives us just some idea of the complexities that people are dealing with. So, yes, you've got the beloved coronavirus there, which has come to us. Um, and just if we talk about this being a curveball, it, it really is a, a curveball and it's hitting us in a way that we still don't fully understand yet. But as you can see uh, in our lovely Hannah Broadway artwork there, um, it's not just about that, it's home, it's economy, it's how, yeah, how is this going to translate? It's families, it's friends, it's a whole range of things. And people at the moment are dealing with uncertainty on a level that they probably haven't dealt with before because it is touching areas that we can see in that slide, but there's also there's some unknown aspects of uncertainty that we just, yeah, there's a fear, I guess. There's a fear there that we don't know how we're going to manage it and are we going to cope? Mm. So we're here to help. Mm. Okay, and what we wanted to do in this, this webinar and why we kind of put the two together is because Jill and I um, see this all the time and you know a lot of the work that we do in coaching is around um, giving people the skill set and the mindset to navigate uncertainty um, and it's felt hasn't it Jill particularly kind of poignant and relevant um, recently but we kind of had this realisation that actually a lot of our work is helping people make sense of uncertainty all the time COVID or no COVID. Yes and um, you know I, I'm inspired by a lady called Margaret Wheatley who's written a lot about leadership and um, 
we what we do in times of uncertainty we, we come graspy what we call graspy we grasp for certainty and we start to grab hold of things and try and lead on them in that way and 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 manage it and and uh control it and sometimes we just can't do that and there's this beautiful phrase that meg wigley talks about where you have to let go and lead and it's the same in our lives. If we let go of this need to control and to order, then there can be this beautiful surrendering feeling of actually, I can be with this. I, I can be with this uncertainty because as it unfolds, it tells me something about me and what kind of leader and person I have to be in this moment. So absolutely, Matt, the things that we do as a company, um, yeah, is that how do I need to be with this and, and offer those skills, not just for now, but for more broadly so 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 be, that, that segues quite nicely onto me asking you what, what do you think Matt really is the benefit of coaching because people often get a bit confused about coaching and don't really know what it is but you know what, how do you see this yeah panning out in terms of yeah good question so so I think you know to answer that I think you know let's just to, to touch on what we're going to do in this in this session because that, that's basically what we're doing we're gonna you know as per the the blurb when people signed up, like what, what can we take from coaching and what and how can we apply it to, to uncertainty? So we're gonna have a little look at what the role of coaching is. And and again, kind of reassurance to anyone who's who's signed up and watching this now on the replay that we're gonna give you some examples, we're gonna show you some examples. And then and then again, just a reminder, I know some people have joined us um, since we started. If you've got any questions, please ping them in the Q&A box um, and we'll, we'll address them halfway through and again at the end. Um, to come back to your question, uh, for me, coaching is um, about what, um, again, another kind of hero of, of ours calls um, coming above the line. And this is a kind of Tara Brack who talks about this um, a lot. And, um, you know, coaching at its best um, allows people to make conscious choice. Um, it's quite often in our lives we work on autopilot and in a kind of slightly robotic way and I, and I think that's when we're below the line we just kind of go through life doing things and thinking in a certain way and acting in a certain way um, the gift of some of the skills in coaching is that it can allow people to come above the line and what I mean by that is that you know and absolutely haven't we seen this recently that we can't always control our circumstance um, and you, you know <laughs> Our mortality and our fragility as humans has been utterly kind of mirrored up to our faces in the last 10 weeks. Um, the extent to which we cannot control our circumstances has been, there's been no more, no better reminder than the recent events than that. But what we can do is control our relationship with them. And if we can be in a conscious relationship with our circumstance, and we can be at conscious choice about how we think, how we react, how we respond, how we act if necessary, um, then we can be in a much happier place. Um, particularly, um, particularly when it comes to this feeling of uncertainty. So you can, we can make it a choice. So we can't choose to know everything that's gonna happen. And we can't choose to make decisions about what's gonna happen next week and the week after, because frankly, nobody knows that. And we never did, but we absolutely don't anymore. But what we can choose is how we get, like you said, how we're gonna be how are we going to be how am I going to behave and how am I going to choose to react to that uncertainty um you know and I think this this quote captures it in a really nice way and is going to kind of go into our first example of how you might do that um yes uh, the barn is burning and um you know this this is a, an appropriate analogy for lots of world events at the moment isn't it um but it's up to us whether we choose to see the moon right like that we've got it's up to us how how we choose to see that um, and this is a kind of 17th century, I, I can't remember the guy's name, like a 17th century Japanese samurai or something, he said this. Um, but whoever he was, he was right and he's been right for three or four hundred years. Um, so so the, the, the joy of coaching, as we know, um, is twofold. Like you can coach other people, but you can also coach yourself. And what coaching tries to dive it to is get people into a position where they're at choice with their circumstances and their relationship um, with what's happening in the world around them. And um, that's the beauty of it. So let's, let's, go, let's go into our first skill. So, you know, to kind of just remind of the structure, we're just gonna look at a couple of strategies that we've kind of stolen, if you like, from the coaching world, aren't we, Jill? That yep. we feel really 
a really beneficial um, beneficial ways of thinking um, and approaching this this sense of uncertainty. Um, so the first one's reframing. Do you want to talk us through it? Yeah, and this is so powerful and. Um, the the not only the mental but the physiological impact of being able to reframe something um is so so uh impactful it just can change your day and you, we all know we've had a conversation with somebody that actually if we might start off feeling like we're in the shade of the tree but actually by the end of it we've come out the other side uh, and i know many people that have that impact on me um but we're in a situation now we may not have access to those people and it's different when it's on zoom and so on Changing our perspective on things um, can actually, well, does have an impact on how you then behave and how the next steps that you can take. Um, and our mood can lighten. And very often at the end of a coaching uh, session with clients, they'll say, I feel lighter. I feel lighter. And all that's happened has been a conversation and obviously a skillful one, um, but we've managed to reframe their position on a particular topic. And this is called reframing and you totally look at something in a different way. So one way, let's just look at this nice one here. So you might be that you got a lovely old fashioned camera there, thank you, Hannah, taking a picture of a fruit bowl and um, and the, the fruit is there and it looks lovely and it looks um, one way from a certain perspective. If you take the picture from a different angle, um, it, say for an aerial view, it looks different. That's obvious, isn't it? It's still a bowl of fruit, but we just got a different perspective on it. We look at it one way, we look at it another. The one on the right looks like a smiley face. <laughs> I just thought I just observed that. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> <laughs> With a nice haircut. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's, that's one way of looking at it. Another way, look at this picture here. Okay, you've got the back of the chair looking out at the window. The first thing I look at there is um, the chair, which fe feels kind of a little bit solid and a bit maybe an obstruction. But they're looking out the window frame um, um, into a room. That's so, and then if we turn the chair around, you're looking through a different window into the same room. You see different things. The room is the same. The chair is still there. There's a person sitting there with the cat on their lap, but you don't see it from um, the previous angle. So your angle absolutely opens your eyes to a new way of seeing. Great. So um, yeah, the contents of the room stay the same our view is different. So this, this um, technique, if you like, and this approach of taking the same thing, um, but getting your perspective on it to change, to reframe it, to find a new frame through which to, to look at it. And again, a hugely powerful technique in coaching and one that, you know, you and I are using, <laughs> using all the time with clients at the moment, aren't we, as a, as a way of, you know, I want to open my school, for example, I know there's lots of school leaders on the call. I want to open my school, I want it to happen now. And you know, there's a whole load of spin-offs if I can do that and and that's that thing's fixed like you you cannot control um, the date at which you open your school all you can do is control your relationship with it um, okay so that's we're always it's really important to us isn't it that we don't hang out in theory that we mm. that this is active and applied so um, Jill, what Jill and I are going to do now is and we'll do this the same we can do two concepts and we're going to demonstrate um, each of them so you can see what they might look like and this obviously is what they look like in a conversation um, but we'll have a chat afterwards about how you might be able to use this yourself um, and again if you've got any questions as we go please just ping them into the Q&A um, we're going to take a pause after this first kind of demonstration just to um, check in on that check in on that and um, and respond to me and then we're going to go into kind of part two so I've almost forgotten what we're doing um, Yes. Okay. I'm going to so, coach you. Well, yeah, there we go. You're going to coach me <laughs> reframing. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let's do that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. And um, someone's just asking, can you give examples of reframing? And we're just about to do that now. Yeah. Um, okay. So hello, Matt Hall. <laughs> oh, hi. You okay? <laughs> just uh, starting engaging with the coaching alliance mm -hmm. there. Um, okay. So what is, yeah, what's hanging out for you at the moment that you could do with maybe looking at from a, a different perspective um oh yeah what, what are you feeling stuck on what are you feeling a bit icky yeah, about? i guess to use the theme and we don't we don't plan these so i'm thinking on the spot to use the theme i think it is around the uncertainty so our we've got i've got three children year six year four year two our year six has gone back to school yesterday um <laughs> <laughs> i'm missing her already oh, honest 
Um, I, but I think there's still so much uncertainty around when the other two will go back. Um, and it feels, it's almost like we're in a halfway house now. So that uncertainty is kind of creating this weird waiting room feeling where, well, like Freya's gone. Um, so that ball's rolling, but we've actually no idea when the other two might go. And it's almost, I feel like I'm kind of, so like we've come out of the whole homeschooling because that, mm. I mean, let's be honest, that was, getting, <laughs> that was like our effectiveness and that was getting thinner and thinner, but we've now got to find a way of kind of getting back into the homeschooling with the other two now that Freya's gone back. And mm. I feel like, I feel like we're kind of just wait, I feel like we're waiting because we don't know what's going to happen. Like they might go back before the summer. They might not. They might go back in September. They might not. It just feels it just all fills up in the air about what when our kids are going to get two of our kids. Okay. Are so it feels like you always you use the word waiting. It feels like we're waiting, and in that waiting, what feels possible if you're just waiting for something? What feels like you can do? What can you do if you're in this waiting feeling? I don't know. <laughs> A lot. Um, no, it feels a bit. Yeah, it feels uh, it feels suspended. I mean, yeah. the thing that comes to mind actually is literally I've got an image of like a like a, a train station waiting room. Like it's supposed to be here by now, and it hasn't turned up. Like it feels like dead time. It feels mm. ugh, just mm. yeah. Dead yeah. time waiting train waiting room in a train station. Okay, we should have been here by now. Okay, so let's that feels that doesn't feel like a particularly nice place to be. So should we try and look at it from a different? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'd like you to let's see, Matt. Can you think of um, I don't know a favourite uh, place to go and have a cup of coffee, or it might be your favourite restaurant, or something that makes you feel God, I just love being here. This place is just. I feel really at home or it makes me feel all well with the world. Yeah. Can you think of somewhere like a restaurant or a coffee yeah. cafe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Describe it. Describe it. Describe it. Yeah. To you, straight on a plate, um, Slaughterhouse Coffee Shop, which is oh. a tiny coffee shop. Well, you know it, but it's a tiny coffee shop on um, the Cromarty Firth, just, yeah, north of Inverness. Um, it's this tiny little, tiny, tiny, tiny place with a log burner. The coffee's amazing. There's a view of, mountains and a lake and the lock outside um yeah that's just that's just like the place to be oh and how do you feel when you're in there then when you walk in the door and oh <sighs> if really homely it's like you know it's scotland so it's blowing again outside the the rain's ver horizontal um and yet yeah, like you have there's something really communal about it so it is really tiny there's like probably space for 10 people you have to sit next to people you don't know um but mm. as soon as you walk in like you get that waft of really good coffee the log fires on there's probably a couple of wet dogs on the floor and you're kind of like sit down knees together with a bunch of local people from Cromarty that you don't know before but you're going to have a chat with um yeah it just feels homely mm. Mm. i'm sensing that it's, does it feel safe is that yeah, not the right? safe actually, yeah. Okay. It really, it is kind of really exposed, but this kind of really nicely insulated little mm. kind of block of wood that you sit inside that, you know, it could be battering away outside, but you're warm and you've got a good coffee. On the go. um, you might be doing the crossword. Yeah. So how about, what if you're homeschooling from this point on, you know, what if you approached your time with your girls from this perspective of it's safe and it's warm and it's homely and yeah it's just familiar and there's the smell of coffee and yeah what what feels possible if you look at it from that viewpoint your girls <laughs> i wish we practiced these before because i wouldn't start feeling like i want to cry <laughs> um oh well, it's interesting. So thinking of it, so actually the thing that comes up when I think about it from this perspective actually is that is the word you just said, which is safe. Mm. Um, actually, actually they're both at home and they're safe and we're here, we're a family and it's like, actually that's all, the ma actually that's okay, that's enough, right? So I think, mm, it's interesting. Mm. Yeah, I think I, in my mind I've been getting it as a, 
uh, Freya's gone back. The other two now we need to crack the whip. Like, come on, to get, let's get the homeschooling going again because that's the important thing. Because she's back at school, we know we need to get back to normal. But actually, from this perspective, it feels like actually they're at home and they're safe and they're warm and they're dry and they're making biscuits like they were yesterday. Then, then that's probably enough. Still, that's probably all right. It's like the important stuff covered. So just to reflect, how, what does that perspective give you? How do you, yeah, what's the impact on you? How are you feeling now? Um, yeah, just so that it's, it just feels, I think before I felt like I'd got loads of stuff to do and to sort out and I don't feel like I've got loads of stuff to do and sort out now. Actually, it's like uh, just grounded. Um, mm. Yeah, just a sense of, actually, it's fine. Like this, so something's changed, Freya's gone back, but not, nothing, I mean, it's interesting, I think about the link, like that coffee house and there's yeah, something really solid about that coffee house in Slaughterhouse. It's like, I know, I know if I, when, whenever we go back there, it will still be there. Um, so like home, looking at, yeah, that, that's, that's my job in this, is just to keep the home, keep them home and safe and yeah. Mm. Oh, lovely, gosh. Ooh, okay, Bye. thank you. I felt that. I felt that. That was beautiful. Thanks for uh, you because now we are. Oh, why are we doing work this afternoon? Well, Jill says we don't have to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, forget it. So, yeah, go on, Matt. Do you want to? I was going to say that that's just a very short example of reframing. So, think of. I said, think of somewhere there, like a restaurant or a cafe. It could be think of, and again, scribble these down and you'll get the recording if you want, but it could be think of a favourite holiday destination. What is it about that? So one of my clients, it's skiing in the Alps. So what is it about skiing in the Alps that makes you feel alive? Well, it's the fresh air, it's the snow, it's the crunchy sound when you put your skis on the fresh bit of snow. What is it about it, you know, that makes you buzzy? Or what if you looked at this issue that you've got from that perspective of feeling alive? What feels possible then? What, what, what impact does that have on your behaviour? What are you going to do as a result of that? Instead of waiting for something, which mm. means that Matt's got feet in bits of cement, he's now got, he knows what his role is. He's going to, he's going to keep the fire, the home fires burning kind of thing and, 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 and build that. And that feels purposeful. It feels right in the moment. Mm. What, um... We've got some questions and comments mm. we want to look at in a minute. Um, I think the challenge where I, I, I'm mindful of the challenge of, of anyone watching and, you know, when we've challenged on this before, like, that's great. There's two of you. Um, you know, I don't have a coach. I don't have someone to have this conversation with to reframe for me. I'm, I'm curious, Jill, about your experience of reframing for yourself. Like, mm. what, like you know, how do you do that? Oh, gosh. OK, so, um, yeah obviously I, I have been coached and I coach so I've got lots of tools within me but a very simple one um, is the phrase of you, you have this you, you, you recognize first of all you have to notice that's the key notice how you're feeling well actually I'm feeling really low about this um, I'm feeling a bit ooh, about this okay how do I want to be do I want to feel low no I don't okay so um, one thing I often ask myself is what's the gift what's the gift in what's happening to me what's the gift in what I'm feeling or what's the gift in anything whatever it is the topic is so it could be that I, yesterday for example I felt very low low in energy not because I've been physically busy but just very low in energy I felt down about that so this morning I said well okay what if I just feel okay with that that that's just okay to feel like that and it just lifts this weight off mm -hmm. my shoulder um, mm -hmm. what's the gift in this what it's telling me is I need to rest what it's telling me I need to sleep mm -hmm. what it's telling me is don't be so impatient with your work so what's the gift? What's the, what's the gift? Of it? So first is notice. That's key. Self-awareness. Notice how you're feeling. And then the choice is, what's the gift? Well, yeah. what, what's this telling me? Nice. Two, two very simple things. Nice. nice. Um, so just have a look at the quick, let's have a quick check in on the questions. Give examples of reframing questions. Um, thanks, Candida. So I think, yeah, you obviously saw some, I think, um, yeah, you know, the examples Jill gave. So, you know, kind of actually, what if I went to my favourite restaurant, favourite memory as a child, favourite coffee shop, favourite... Um, food. Bar, favourite holiday destination, food. Um, what you're trying to do is get your body to physically associate itself with somewhere else where there's positive connotations. Because normally if we're feeling stuck or um, negative or unsure, that tends to have negative um, connotations. So go somewhere where there's positive associations. So for me, that came up quickly as 
um, a coffee shop in the Highlands. Um, there's some other really nice kind of really specific um, questions, which are, you know, what, what it, you can do it through time and space sometimes. So again, if, and particularly if you're coaching yourself, if you're going through this process yourself, rather than relying on a coach or a partner, you know, how, how I quite often the, you know, let's go, let's go to this place 30 years from now and look back, like, what would you be saying um, to yourself? Oh, do you remember that? Do you remember that ridiculous COVID thing in 2020 when the kids couldn't go? Go. Oh yeah, I remember that. Like suddenly, it quite often shrinks when we look at it from um, from time backwards. Mm. Um, another really nice one, I, again, I think, is the kind of travel through space. So imagine you're going up and you're going high, and you're going to go and sit on a cloud. You're going to look back down. Or you're going to sit on a satellite, and you're going to look back down at the Earth and look at this topic, this thing of let's choose my one. You know, I don't know how to homeschool now. Don't know what to do. And you're going to look at it from that perspective and suddenly again it's kind of tiny well you know it's one of it's just one bit of my life and there's lots of other bits of my life that are going on and actually it's not we allow it quite often to become here and front and central um and again kind of imagining the zooming out can be a really nice way of just finding a different perspective reframing and Ollie's asked a really good question about, are you always going to choose a positive opposite and encourage someone to go to a positive opposite um, from the place that you're at? In coaching, it doesn't always have to be that you're down about something. It could be that you're stuck, as in, I don't know where to go with this, or you're feeling good about something, but you want to feel amazing. So coaching isn't necessarily a deficit model that you take someone from a negative to a positive. You can take someone from a neutral place where they just feel a bit, I don't know where to go. Or you can take them from, I feel good about it, but I really want to feel exhilarated about this. So it's all about reframing it to, and again, the beauty of this is, how, do you, how does the client want to feel? How does the person you're talking to want to feel? How do you want to feel? And ultimately, coaching is about making you feel alive and totally fulfilled in your life. Mm -hmm. So if that's how you want to feel, then let's, take, let's go there. Let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's try it. So some comments in the chat and also some, some Q&A. Um, so, um, yeah, love the concept of letting go and lead. Examples have done that. Yeah, Lindsay, lovely. Skill of reframing. It resonates with your perspective. Will you become your prison or your passport? Yeah, I love that. Um, what elements of this cafe could you bring into your home for this safe space? More coffee. Oh, love, <laughs> definitely. Maybe yeah, I love that. Room. It's cold today. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Georgie. Thanks, Claire. And then Matt's got a great question. To what extent is, is it legitimate for a leader to wait for leadership from a higher power, for example, government, local authority, or the consensus of local schools? Um, what's your take on that one, Jill, as a former head Oh, well, you could be waiting forever. And to be honest, with education, I, you know, I've led three three schools. You, you've always got some higher power above you waiting to give something, uh, some missive down to you. Again, you can wait like you're in a waiting room or you can crack on and you know your direction of travel. And as Matt says, all the time, you, you, there's always going to be change in education. It's a political football. We know that. Um, so the only thing you can control is your response to something. So when something lands on your desk that you weren't expecting, you can choose how to respond to it. Instead of waiting for it to land on your desk, you just know that you have got 100% the resources to deal with whatever lands on your desk. So with your inner resource absolutely strong, um, there isn't a sense of doom or, or waiting for something to arrive that you're not going to be able to cope with. Lovely, right? So that's reframing, um, and so we um, let's let's move on slightly. Then, so let's look at another kind of skill we can steal from, or concept we can steal from coaching. That that again, you and I feel really um, mm. really benef really benefit in, in thriving in uncertainty. Um, and that's um, uh, this concept of limiting personas. So limiting personas aren't a skill. They're a, they're a kind of concept and a way of understanding how we think. And um, we often, particularly when we don't know what's going to happen. Um, and again, I say this from a, from a background in education and coaching, not psychology, but the, <laughs> it's, I've, trust me, it's well informed based on lots of reading. Quite often, if we, if we feel there's something we're not sure about, we might interpret it as a threat. And when we get a threat, then our limbic brain wakes up and kicks in. And what it will start to do is start to, it will kick in first and it will start to speak to us and tell us what we should or shouldn't do. And over time, what we recognized is that particularly people in leadership positions, but not exclusively, these, these kind of voices that our limbic system um, creates can actually be personified a little bit. They can actually, if we imagine they were people, 
um, or they were personas, um, then actually they, we can start to say actually they've, they kind of got characters of their own. So um, in the work that we've done, we've really noticed that there's kind of five common what we call limiting personas kind of, and again, these are the kind of quite often subconscious, not always, but quite often subconscious negative chat, negative chatter that we listen to um, that's happening in the background in our, in our subconscious. Um, and if we listen to it and let them take over too much, then actually it can be, it can be exhausting and it can, it can actually exacerbate our sense of uncertainty and, and anxiety. So just be really clear, these aren't real voices. Um, these aren't um, real people. These are just, you know, if you were to imagine that there was a committee meeting in your head from time to time, um, these are the people that quite often, and there's others, but these are the people that quite often are on that committee. Um, so I'm just gonna go through them. Um, very briefly and then we'll show you how you might turn the volume down on them a little bit. Um, so the, the first one and this one is showing up a lot at the moment is the perfectionist voice and that's that voice that's saying to you kind of everything needs to be perfect like it all needs to be in order you've got to have your plan it's got to be sorted you've got to have your ducks in a row you've got to, you've got to have your, your, your I's dotted and your T's crossed um, it absolutely has to be perfect and if it's not perfect then you're not perfect. Um, if it's not 100%, then you're not 100%. And, and actually, if you can't get it perfect, then don't show up at all, right? So I think, you know, the perfectionist voice is always that one, quite often I always think of the, the example of, you know, some people hate dancing in public. They really hate dancing. Why do they hate dancing in public? Because there's a perfectionist voice saying, you're going to get it wrong and you're going to look stupid. Um, whereas actually, most people don't care. And most people, I'm not saying all, but most people, dancing, dancing is quite good fun. Like it's quite good for you, but it's the perfectionist voice stops us from doing it. The perfectionist voice keeps you sitting at the side, um, being bored and not joining in. Um, so the perfectionist voice can be really loud, particularly when we don't know what the plan is. It's kind of saying to us, we need, you need to have a plan. There needs to be a plan. There needs to be a strategy. Where is it? Okay, well, if there's not one, then you're not good enough. It equates um, perfection with your sense of self-worth. Uh, should we jump and take it in turns, Jill? Why don't you explain this one? Yeah, so this one, the, the Hannah's drawing of, it's like a toddler raising their arms. You know, when you pick a toddler up from a, a cot, they want to cuddle. Um, this, this voice is the one that keeps you really small and it says, stay in your comfort zone. For goodness sake, uh, Jill, don't go out of your comfort zone because if you do, you'll get lost. Um, and really, you need to, like a child, you need to hold someone's hand really to show you your way through this, this, this different space. So instead of looking a bit stupid and a bit lost, just stay where you are. And, and while you're there, just tune in for affirmation. So you've got people telling you that you've got a good, you know, you're doing a good job. At its worst, this loud voice can make you a bit needy, i.e. rely on lots of affirmation from people um, and means that you just never, um, you never stretch or grow yourself for fear of, of getting lost. It really yeah, does. Keep and, and again, you know, again, if you think about the relevance for these times for uncertainty, you know, that kind of alludes slightly to um, Matt's question before we know, I'm kind of looking for someone else, looking for someone else to tell us what to do, rather mm. than just saying, you know what, I've got this. I've got this. Myself. You know, I need, yeah. I need to do it. I need to, I need to get it right because someone above might tell me I'm wrong. Well, what if you just did it because it's the right thing to do for you and your organisation and in that case, your, your kids and your community? Uh, the next common limiting persona is the workhorse. Um, and again, this one's hanging out a lot in people's minds at the moment, because as we try and control the uncontrollable, what we often do is work harder and harder and harder and harder. So um, I'm, there's a sense that I'm not in control. How will I get control of it? Well, I'll just put in more hours and more hours and more hours. And, and again, small amounts of it, all of these are really important things, you know, perfectionists, high standards are important. Affirmation is important for our well-being. Being told we're doing a good job is important. Working hard is important. Um, you know, we don't progress and get better at stuff without practice and application. But if you are equating your self-worth, how worthy you are as a human to the number of hours that you do, um, then again, I always think it's like, you know, it's like trying to fill up a bucket with holes in. Um, it's just, the, you're just going to keep you know, doing another hour, another hour, staying up later, getting that document done, finishing that spreadsheet, sending that email, um, and it doesn't give you anything back. It's just draining out of the bottom. So if you just equate your, um, your number of hours work to your self-worth, then, then that's exhausting. Um, and there's other ways in which you can feel in control or at peace with not being in control. 
other than just working harder and harder and harder. It's that, it's that grasping, as you talked about at the beginning, um, mm -hmm. of grasp us just by doing more and more work. What about this one? Oh, now you might think that conformism is something that educationalists, those educationists on the, on the call, uh, don't suffer from. But my goodness, we do. And this is the voice um, that just says, look, Jill, shut up. Don't rock the boat. Toe the party line. Don't speak out about government agendas because you might lose your job. It'll be clear your desk moment. Um, don't speak up about certain things. Don't speak your truth, to use a coachy term, because you'll be judged by it as a radical, as a troublemaker. Um, just keep small, keep strong, um, stay in your box. Um, and the impact of that on you as an individual is awful. It's corrosive. It's Oh, you know, it challenges your values um, and it just makes you feel like a shadow of who you are. So, again, at its worst, <clears throat> it's very corrosive and it makes you feel frustrated and held back and repressed. Um, but it's very prevalent in you know, political situations, toxic situations where you feel you can't say something honestly because it won't be received well. But what if, what if you just broke those boxes away, you just smashed out of it and said, Do you know what, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, I'm going to let it land. It may not be well received, but I know how I'm going to respond to any consequences as a result of that. My goodness, how liberating that would be to be able to think, I know what I want to say. I'm going to say it regardless of what the consequences might be. Mm -hmm. That's pretty bold. Mm -hmm. And I always think like in these in these current times, like what an opportunity to tell the conformists where to go. Right. Like the, yeah. world, the world's reorganizing itself. So now's the chance to do something different and not do what the people before you did or not do what the person to the left of you does or the person to the right of you. Um, this is the time when we need non-conformists. Absolutely. Um, more than ever. Okay, last one um, before we then kind of apply it is um, the Punisher. And the Punisher sometimes I see as the kind of conductor of the committee of voices. Um, the Punisher is that, that kind of relentless voice that's saying, you're just not very good, are you? You're going to get it wrong. You're not very good. You're going to get it wrong. Um, and quite often the Punisher shows up in, in lots of particular leadership roles as the imposter syndrome. Like the Punisher is that voice and they're going to find you out. Like, Oh, you know, now, now here's a crisis for you to handle. Like now they'll, now they'll definitely suss you out. Um, and again, the Punisher voice, if we listen to that, if we, if we allow ourselves to truly believe that we're not very good at what we're doing, where 99% of the time we probably are doing a pretty good job in the circumstances, um, then it's exhausting. Just kind of constantly f kind of allowing ourselves to say we're a bit rubbish, we're not very good. Um, it's just the, the, the Punisher voice can be merciless. Um, and we really need to find a way of, of turning it down a bit. Um, okay, so let's just let's have a look at what what that might look like. Um, and and again, please do um, do throw any any thanks. There's some comments coming in in the chat. That's great. We'll have a look at those. And and if you've got any specific questions, throw them in the in the Q and A. Um, so I'm um, going back to my notes. This is where I'm going to coach you, Jill. That's you are revenge. Um, Okay, so yeah, what's what's coming up for you in this time of uncertainty that you're feeling a bit stuck on? Oh, I feel a bit emotional straight away. Um, I really miss my friends. Um, and uh, gosh, I wasn't expecting this. I miss my friends, and every year we meet up, um, and we can't do it this year. And every and I've moved away recently up to Yorkshire, away from them. They're back down in Bristol, and I really want to see them. And we've put an Airbnb for July, but I'm not sure if we're going to make it. Mm. Hmm. Mm. So I'm sensing there's a little child here. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. What um. And she's quite loud, isn't she? It's kind of, you know, think about that image, kind of, mm. I, need I need some, I need some affirmation. What does that, what does that little child need? I think she just needs a good hug and a giggle with people mm. who understand her and who are her peers. Um, mm. I've got my daughter staying with me, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I love, um, but I'm in mum mode. Um, and I suppose I just love to, be around um, people who are my mates who've known me for years um, and it feels a long way away mm -hmm. 
Mm. Yeah. Be somewhere familiar. Something familiar, that's what I think, yeah. Mm. There's something about, um, yeah, that kind of grabbing hold of that. Yeah, what if you were just to hold the hand of that little child for a bit and just say it's all right? It's almost like a mental whisper to yourself there, isn't it? Like, mm. It's all right, isn't it? Um, yeah, um, yes, and we, we do uh, catch in with each other every Saturday. Well, most Saturdays we, we connect with each other. And we're all busy women, we're working, we're all mums as well. So we love each other. Um, uh, so that won't go. No, that, that's still there. It's just not knowing when, yeah, when we can be in a room together laughing and giggling. Mm-hmm. There's, I don't know, I'm going to throw this out here, it might be wrong. Is there another, is there another limiting, perce- I said, oh yeah, spit it out, Matt. I'm sensing there's a perfectionist here. There's something about it needs to be right. Like I need to see them within a certain amount of time. Mm. I need to, mm. like if I, it's kind of it's almost a bit all or nothing like if i don't see them by this time then it's going to be a disaster or i'm not going to be happy or things aren't going to be right is that does that resonate yeah we always see each other in the summer always right. always in july mainly in july and it feels like for years you know i'd various you know it was ahead it would be the thing that oh you know anyone who's online who knows about how running schools it would be the weekend where i just could you know I wasn't being a wife I wasn't being a mum I was just being a friend and it always been in that time it'd been July mm. um, and I looked forward to it, it was, it's the weekend. Mm. Mm. So is there a perfectionist here kind of saying it has to be that weekend? A bit of that yeah that it, yeah well, you know it's us seven together and it's not happening and it doesn't feel mm. right that it's not yeah as it should be yeah. Okay. So let me just let me just try something here um so this is always a nice way to try and kind of turn down the volume of and as you know jill like we can't silence them they're a product of our limbic brain and we can't can't take our limbic brain out that wouldn't be great um so just let's just ima- imagine imagine you're kind of in a really large empty space maybe like a sports hall or something like that like a gym like a really mm. you know, sort of place where kids do their exams and you're in your hand you've got a volume control and at the kind of corner of the room there's there's this perfectionist and it's really loud it's saying you've got to see them you've got to see them the same weekend it's got to be right you know if, and if you don't see them if you don't see them it's ruined you know it has to be mm. like that it has to be like that and it can't be anything else it just has to be like that because that's what you've done for the last seven years mm. and you're just going to go over with this kind of big control and you're just going to point it at that perfectionist mm. and you're just going to press the volume down button and we're going to hold it and we're doing that now and we're just holding it we're holding it and it's just getting quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter. And it's really, it's really magic, this remote control, because actually this perfectionist is actually physically shrinking now. Like that voice in your head is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller to the point it's just a whisper. Mm. And now you're in this big, large gym with lots of space what else is possible with your friends? Oh, well, immediately I feel, um, it feels like almost like I can visualize a space opening up in my head. Um, what feels, what fills that space now is, um, actually what, what the word that pops in my head is commitment. We know we are going to see each other. So that's not that, and that feels very reassuring. And we're talking about doing something in November. So that feels, it's shifted, it's shifted my focus, and actually, that feels more expansive. Actually, mm. yeah, that feels a re- like a relief. Right. Great. And I, I accidentally forgot to not share the sc- to stop sharing the screen at the beginning, so people were, were slightly bigger. But um, yeah. What? Let's just recap then. Sorry. <laughs> we always coach. We always make a commitment, don't we? That we will never role play coaching because you coach the real person so that was real that was very real being real crying and lovely comments on in the in the, uh, <laughs> Jordan says bless you i totally feel for you andrew says hang around we can have fun in a giggle together oh so says bless i'm sure you're not the only one feeling that at the moment i certainly miss my friends yeah i think we all mm. did um so the pro so what's the yeah the process so i think you know 
the 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 the, the beauty of limiting personas is that you're fifty percent there mm. in terms of addressing them as soon as you recognise them. Mm. So like you know the the science shows that number one, it's a bit like your your first, your point in the last one, Jill. You know, number one, acknowledge and recognise that they're there as soon as you say, oh, this, is this a perfectionist voice? Is this my little child that needs a bit of a hug? Is this is this the workhorse that, you know, am I, do I really need to do another two hours tonight? Or actually is it the workhorse telling me to do that? Um, do I really want to do it this way? Or is it actually my conformist? As soon as we, as soon as we recognize our limiting personas, we're kind of, we're opening the door to doing something about it. Um, what, what, what worked for you? I'm interested. Was it the volume thing or was it the hug thing? Um, it was the volume. It was put it in a big room. Um, and immediately the big room makes me push the boundaries like I felt a bit closed in by missing my friend so by being in a big space it's pushing the boundaries out and then walking over and pointing this thing as soon as it's the well I had this horrible person in front of me shouting yeah it's going to be imperfect um, and as soon as I turned the volume down they just the impact just immediately just minimized and then it's a male sorry men but it was a male figure <laughs> just just shrunk down um and then I could see more you know I could then look around the rest of the room and go oh, actually this little thing over there is tiny and I've just got all this space and I can do whatever I want I can choose to decide what I do next mm. so for me that worked yeah that really mm. did work um because mm. I was thinking it's not it's not going to be right it's not going to be right Ugh. and again I think you know from my perspective something about the physical something about the physical um you know it kind of it's in the body it's something you, it's not just a case of i'm just going to think my way out of this um it's actually i'm going to do something so you know something about i know you're imagining it but i'm going to physically take a control and do something um about it i'm going to change what i'm doing rather than yeah. just oh it will go it will go um and i think always with limiting personas that phrase of what we resist persists so oh. you know if you've got a perfectionist voice and trust me as you well know i have a perfectionist voice you're constantly like just ignore it just ignore it just ignore it it is it will it won't go away um there's something there to about really focusing on it and there's some really good questions actually in the in the in the chat there about um what coaching methodologies we've been using so that they can research further well we we are matt and i are both a coactive training institute trained coaches um so cti go go and have a look at their website but uh, the, 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 and um, that is also of course based on positive psychology there's a whole rank of sort of psychological and evidence that supports coaching um and mike asks um interesting to see matt suggesting personas um rather than asking jill to identify one really good catch um and that's the key of coaching coaching is about empowering people to find the answer themselves and the fact that i found it and and it and it landed and it went yeah that's that's the one that landed so little little child maybe a little bit but actually it was the perfectionist because i've identified it my goodness me i'll remember it it's got resonance it's something that i've found and it's empowering so to know that it was my perfectionist hanging out in my head the next time i catch myself feeling a bit graspy and a bit trying to get certainty around the same issue or something else i'm going to notice it as matt says and go oh god it's my perfectionist voice hanging out of bed right i know what to say to that one or i know what to do about that one mm -hmm. and immediately you have choice in your hands as opposed to feeling at the mercy of these feelings it's so empowering this is why i want the whole world our mission is the whole world realizes that they have choice they have choice in how they feel you are not your thoughts you know you are just not to, your to, thoughts just to build on mike's question mike you know mike says what's the logic here in suggesting rather than encouraging um, again, I kind of a bit like hands up. I don't think there was logic. You know, you could have you could approach that the other way and say, well, there's there's you know, five common limiting personas. Which one do you think Jill is showing up? Um, I think probably because I know Jill really well, I could see that it was mm. one of those two hanging out. But I think both strategies would have worked. Um, okay, Oliver's saying, do you find that people struggle to visualise when you're asking them to imagine? It requires a really someone on our call. There's someone here who we know struggles. Um, it requires a really open heart and mind. Many people might really need coaching, might not be naturally disposed to this. Um, I think my take on that is, yeah, there's kind of two parts. Do people struggle? Yes, they do. Um, and sometimes um, it won't work the first time. They won't get there the first time. Sometimes asking them to draw stuff out and collate stuff can be another way of doing it. Um, we do use quite a lot of visualization techniques in, in what we do, but it's, 
and it always surprises us how many people do um, find or see or open up or do something. Um, so yeah, some people struggle and there's other ways, you know, you can ask them to write it or document it or do it visually. Um, and sometimes it's about the stimulus creating the conversation, not about the stimulus itself. So actually it might be, I can't visualize it, but this is what quite often it's like, I couldn't visualize what you're talking about, Matt, but this is what came up. Okay, let's talk about what came yeah. up. I think the second part of the question is, you know, common one we come across, isn't it, Jill? You know, many people who might really need coaching might not be naturally disposed to this. What's your take on that one? Yeah, um, if people aren't naturally disposed to visualisation, I have a client um, who really struggles um, and it's okay. It's, th I suppose the thing is, don't make it wrong. Um, what I say to, to, to clients is um, whatever comes through is just exactly right for you and you deal with the uniqueness of your, your individual people in front of you. So you can't get it wrong. So when you've got this freedom of not getting it wrong and everything's right, suddenly, right, okay, so what came through? Well, I, I had this feeling of, a red aura around me. Well, what's in that red aura? What you know? What, what do you get from that? Well, I get anger. Okay, tell me about that. So you 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 are the curious one, and your skill as a coach is to just pull out the meaning and help elaborate on the meaning from whatever a client brings brings forward. Great. Um, okay, so let me just jump back onto our slides uh, because. Um, yeah, I just, want to, I just feel it's healthy to recap. So um, uh, we just looked at two strategies. So we, we kind of jumped on here to say, what, how might you thrive in uncertainty? And I guess the answer to that question is, well, that here's two ways. And there's a whole load of others that you can steal from the coaching world, but um, kind of identifying the negative chat, the negative and personifying it as a, you know, it's quite hard to get rid of negative chat until you make it a character, until you personify it um, is one. And the other one is finding reframe. Take yourself to another place, another time, another geographical location, um, and look at the thing that you're feeling stuck on or the thing that feels uncertain from that place. And remember, that's normally a grounded and more positive perspective. Um, we're coming up to the end of the hour, and I should have said that um, we'll send you all the, a copy of the recording and we'll send you a couple of PDFs with both reframing questions on and those limiting personas as well. Um, but we have got kind of how are we doing five minutes um for any questions so um this is your chance um we did another hour on this <laughs> i know oh um, it has flown by yeah, it's flown um <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna be cheeky and just dark because i know people will start to slip away now um and just explain what we do um so uh as we said at the top of the call we're a leadership and development um leadership coaching and development company we work primarily with international schools not exclusively crudely there's kind of four things we do three of them are here one is one-to-one -one leadership coaching um, the other one's coach training so we train people in organizations to take a coaching approach um, and then the third one is kind of bespoke leadership development programs and then the fourth which we're really excited aren't we jill is um very excited is, uh, is taking some of these concepts limiting personas for example and um we've got a program that we we're starting to work with um, students with 14 year olds on um, so that's what we do and if you're interested in finding out any more about any of those things then then all the details are in front of you um, it's not complicated you can see them um, so any other that's all the formalities done any if you've got any other questions I'm just having a look um, mm. Georgie says we need another hour <laughs> we, we can definitely do another hour um, just not at the moment uh, yeah Lita, thanks for the feedback thanks Ollie thanks for Seema great um thanks mary great great you've got some tools lovely um oh, oh. thanks jules oh i'm missing all these people jules, oh, I'm <laughs> I'm <gonna go>. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just we'll we'll do a what andrew mcdonald brown calls a soft finish and just let uh we'll let people go as and when they're ready but we'll stay here if anyone's got any questions Thank you, Hilary. So you're doing really proud of your work. You've been in the middle leadership team meeting. Oh, with school oh, in India wow. we've been working with. Oh, oh wow. Thanks. Thank you. Mm. Get in touch. Just get in touch, folks. Yeah, it's, uh, it regardless, help. you know, we, we, it's about making friends and mm. offering help. Genuinely, we want to be of service. And, thanks, um, yeah. yeah. Thanks, yeah, everyone. We're really excited about doing, taking it to children. It's really Yes. Um, there's something in the Q&A. Um, 
Mm. There we go, Matt. Thanks very much. Needed that. That's lovely. Yeah, I think the Q and A, you, you and I can see in the chat. Others, I don't know. Still a Zoom novice. And I think you know what I hope people yeah, will get no, from it. Sorry. Oh. Joe Heap says, "Let's do more at Towsy." Yay! Let's do more. Definitely. Oh, the, 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 I, I suppose the thing, a big message from this is just take care of yourself. Um, mm. Really, and I hope in this hour you've had a moment to just invest in yourself you know it's a, a bit of time that you can actually take and uh just get a bit of perspective in, in what we've been going through so um that's really important to matt and i that you uncover your own resources and know that you can get through things um because you've got it and you don't you're not just waiting in a on a train station somewhere or waiting for me to go and see your mate somewhere in july you're actually able to grab it but not in a controlling way but in a reframing looking at it differently way so we've all got that skill we all know how to do it sometimes we just forget and i hope that I know. yeah and, and you're right and i think you know we need in these times we need more than ever for people to take responsibility for their own emotions and feelings and response and the idea that you're not in control of those is the source of a lot of a lot of our current problems um oh jenny that's kind appreciate the vulnerability and the handiness <laughs> zoom authenticity is not an easy feat no it's not glad we've done that uh stuart info on website yes if you go to the website and click on programs you'll see something there called the inner leader program yeah um, it's in a it's just coming to the end of its pilot stage um working with a school in china um we're about to start running it with some other schools we'd del be delighted to have a chat with you about it um and yeah absolutely i mean the, the young offenders and that, amazing that would be a mm. good place to start oh my to. goodness mm. yes yeah. mm. um great thanks Stuart. you've got that message yeah have a look on the website don't don't hesitate to get in touch if you want to yeah. talk about it um oh yeah Hopefully in the slaughterhouse. Yeah, you're right. Virginia. Oh, hello, Virginia. <laughs> oh, that'd be wonderful. Great. Or tomorrow night. Tomorrow we've got our... Yes, that's yeah. true. We do, don't we? Oh, one to one leadership literature is life-changing. I would encourage you to give it a go. Thank you, Rachel. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Any more questions? So we're slowly petering out and I'm going to take this opportunity to stop recording and I'm going to yeah. close, close the webinar um, in the next kind of minute, I think. Um,